going to be streaming today uh, the full stack web app framework I've been working on, Remake.js. Um, I am not really in the mood to stream today, but I am going to stream anyways. <laughs> um, so I, the part of the reason I'm not really feeling like streaming today is there's just a lot going on. Like I have a lot of stuff to work on and whenever I feel like the project has gotten much bigger than something I can do within like a year. <laughs> uh, it just kind of takes on a life of its own and it feels like this too big thing, you know, like it's it's just this like, you know, this monster that's kind of gotten out of control. So I'm going to try to s focus on like simple things today, um, but I'm not sure exactly where that's going to lead us. I would, one thing I would really, really like to do is a uh, get a version of the site live today, but we'll see. So um, last time I left off, I was building uh, an app called Adventure Story. And so let's get that set up uh, as the first thing. So let's go into GitHub and then we'll go into Adventure Story and then we're just gonna do npm run dev. Okay, so that should be set up. Okay, so now we've got Adventure Story. Um, and we can do, we can sign up. And we're just gonna sign up with like a new user. So we'll just say like new, <laughs> new user as the name and we'll sign up. Um, and we have a blank story with the old styles. That's very weird actually. Oh, I know what it is. Hello, Salvin. How's it going? Um, how are you doing? Uh, what's up with you? What are you, what are you working on? Way too warm. Yeah, I've got a fan and an air conditioning going and it's still a little hot. Uh, yeah. Um, where are you based out of? You're in... Are you in Canada? Yeah, you're in Canada. You're in Montreal, right? Um, I would imagine, I would imagine it's uh, it's much cooler there than it is here. <laughs> Solvin or Solval? Hey, Forsaken GM, how's it going? Uh, da, da, da. okay. So I was just in the wrong repository, which is why that was. Um not running the right code so now we should have the new styles how's it going what are you uh what are you up to today is it hot wherever you're at it's hot where i'm at and it's hot where solvin's at it's an island lots of humidity plus it's a metropolitan area so pink sink heat sink yeah that sucks um you're going to a festival right now. Are you on your way there? Or are you, are you at the location? Or are you about to leave? And what festival? That sounds fun. It's like a music festival. Oh, it's very hot. That sucks. You should bring like a little spray bottle filled with water. Just like a little spray bottle filled with water and then you can spray it on yourself and just like fan yourself with a piece of paper. Cool yourself right off. Stop yourself from the uh, the heat heat stroke. It's like Tomorrowland. Wait, that was a movie, right? Tomorrowland Festival. Okay, that's a festival. Ninety-eight. Eesh. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so it's like an electronic music festival. I haven't heard of it. That looks pretty cool. Well, I hope it doesn't uh, doesn't turn out like that other festival on that island. What was that one? They did like the Netflix and the Hulu documentaries about it. Um, it's a bunch of DJs. That's awesome. Oh yeah, Fire Festival. Yeah, my um, <laughs> my cousin works for like a. Uh, I don't know. I won't talk about it. But yeah. 
uh, fire festival. Pretty funny. Pretty funny thing. Pretty crazy. Um, so that's cool. Yeah, I hope it doesn't turn out like that. I hope it's the opposite of fire or fire festival in every way. <laughs> um, except I guess like I hope people go. I hope people show up. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, the last place I left off uh, last week. Uh, your legs hurt, whoa, if your legs hurt like hell, how are you gonna go to a festival, dude? You, you gotta, you gotta be there, like, for a long time standing up. Uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, there's what you love. You're gonna sit? Yeah, you're gonna need, you should get one of those, um, the remember Dwight in the office? He had that like leg brace chair. You should get something like this. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> That's awesome. It's like one of those things that I'm sure like. But this is so much more stylish. This is like one of those things that I'm sure like seemed like a super good idea and then like in practice it just looks really bad. That's really funny. Um, yeah, you could just get like bring a foldable chair. That sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, it's pretty bad. Uh, like like brave warrior okay so brave so don't worry guys for anyone who's concerned i'm not going to be writing the story uh today i'm done with that but i just have a couple of corrections uh that i'm going to just add real quick so It's not commercial yet, mumble mumble. I did continue. Ooh, that's a, that actually looks not bad. I still wouldn't buy it and I would still be incredibly embarrassed to use it. But it's kind of cool. Um. Oh yeah, you missed my streams last week. No, you stopped by. You stopped by briefly. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I think it's a really good idea. It's just, in practice, it's kind of creepy and weird. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's the same thing with, like, anything new. You know, like Google Glass. I was, like, super excited about that, but apparently it was too creepy and weird for most people. Um... So, we're not going to get Google Glass over. Okay, so I'm going to add this stuff in. There we go. Top level story. Okay, wait. I need to delete this one and then the one at the end. There we go. And then I need to delete all of the IDs. Okay, select all of the IDs, go to the beginning of the line, go to the end of the line, delete, delete, and can I always delete here? Uh, indeed, I cannot. Man, wait, what happened here? Oh, I got it. Okay, so I'll just delete the line. Is There must be a way to like format and clean up JSON. Clean JSON, this must be like a super easy thing. Okay, paste that, two spaces, process. Did you fix it though? It says invalid JSON, why can't it just fix it? Uh, try this one, paste that, 
format beautifier. Come on, dude. Just remove the comma. <laughs> What's the big deal? Um, how do you select all? Uh, can, oh, um, so in Sublime, you so select what you want, uh, the thing, the string you want, and then do Command D. That's the default. Command D. And then you can just hold it down and it'll it'll select it all. So it looks like maybe I have to remove all of these extra commas myself. I don't know. I guess it's not that much work. Sometimes I think about automating something and then I'm like, well, whatever. <laughs> it's not that much work. It's like 20 things I have to remove or something. It's just I'm always afraid I'll make a mistake. Uh, don't make a mistake, don't make a mistake. Um, comma, comma. But yeah, that's the problem with automating stuff is you like look for automation everywhere and then you like spend more time automating things than, than like doing stuff, you know? The wisdom of David. Uh, that's why you guys are here, right? Okay, so let's see if this is valid. Come on, dude. 138. Oh, would it? I don't like prettier. I'm, not, I'm just kidding. I actually don't know if I like prettier. I've never used it. Um, but I actually I really don't like things that auto-format stuff for me. It... Uh, I'm kind of, I don't know, maybe I'm old school at this point. I don't I have no idea. But I just don't like things that, like, do stuff that I didn't tell it to do. Um, yeah. It's just kind of a pet peeve of mine. It's not anything wrong with the tools themselves. Okay. I think we're almost done. 151. Wow. Okay. Here here, 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 okay, but I, I do appreciate it, Solvin, it's just, I'm kind of, uh, curmudgeon -y in that way, okay, there we go, okay, so that should work now, and so now if I go to, if I create a new user, so we'll just do like this user. If you set it to be only for JSON, usually it'll only do it for that. Then you can run it in a JSON file and it'll be like a cleaner. Yeah. That's really cool. I mean, I think I'll treat it like most problems. You know, like if this is a problem I keep running into, uh, where like I want to clean JSON, then I'll I'll probably install it. <coughs> but my frustration level has to get to a certain point before I'll use like a tool to do it. Like it even even to just use Trello is like a lot for me. Like because <laughs> I don't like relying on external tools, especially ones that Atlassian owns. Well, not really, because if you think about it, installing Prettier, then customizing Prettier, figuring out like its specific syntax, and then uh, dealing with the day when eventually it changes unexpectedly and does something unexpected, all of that is going to require a lot of stuff. To be fair, I did take a good six months of formatting stuff before I said screw it, I use prettier. Yeah. I think that's how I usually work. Okay, <clears throat> so we got this adventure story thing. And the text is corrected. My wife went in and uh, and actually corrected all of the text for the adventure story. Oh yeah, the fir the front page. I like it. it there's going to be the to do app here too, and then the <coughs> the progress tracker app. But for now, I've just got this. Okay, so we updated the story with typo collections, and then I was kind of a little bit dumb. Because uh, in the adventure story, <coughs> in the, um, 
let's see. Go and uh, go off in search of the cave. You find a beautiful cave. There are crystals embedded in the entrance, right? So I say like at the start of the story there are crystals, <laughs> but if you look at the first page, it's like you need to find uh, a crystal. <laughs> so you can't be like, hey, your main mission is to find a crystal, and then on the first step. Like, it's like, hey, there's crystals. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll collect the crystals. End of end of game, right? Um, so I need to edit that to be like, there's something else embedded in the cave. I could be like emeralds or, or diamonds or something. Rubies? I guess rubies are good, right? Uh, precious gems. I swear I'm not going to spend very much time on this story. I know most people came here for the uh, for the programming and web development. Although not not like we have a lot of people to to lose out. There's only a few people here, but still, I'll try not to focus on the story too much because uh, the story is pretty much done, anyways. Okay, so we could say emeralds, we could say diamonds, we could say moonstone, we could say pearls. I don't know how pearls would get there. Say sapphires, tanzanite, topaz. We'll say rubies. I like rubies. Um, so let's search for crystal. So there's a neighbor cave that says, okay, so that one's good. There are rubies. Oh wait, how do I pluralize rubies? Is it just, uh, like that. Okay, nice. Solving got to it first. I can't. How are you so fast? <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so we got Ruby there, and then we're gonna say collect the rubies. You collect as many rubies as you can. You've seen this type of ruby before in town. They sell for one thousand gold each and sell the rubies you start leave the rubies behind everyone's dead bring back the rubies to the village rubies awesome <laughs> nice that's awesome 120 I think I'm at like less than half that you better <laughs> the uh, things that don't exist. Nice. That's awesome. Okay, so we have new starting data with all kinds of corrected typos. What? I thought we had like so many corrected typos. My wife gave me the impression that she corrected like a bunch, but there's just one, two. There's just two corrected typos. Okay, whatever. Corrected story. Uh adventure story okay so we're gonna push that out so what I would really 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 like today to do today is to deploy this to like a live web app <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yep yeah that's a uh, that's definitely a thing it happened to me before but then you just rename the file you know <laughs> honestly <laughs> it's all new <laughs> You rename the file, or you come up with some excuse for copying a bunch of existing code. Right? Then you just copy the existing code. You're like, all right, yeah, I'm sorry, dude. I just had to, like, copy your existing code. And then no one knows. Did you make, like, a huge improvement to the code? Or did you just literally just copy it? That's a day's work. Copy and paste. Um, okay. Really bad practices here <laughs> that I'm promoting. Just like randomly renaming important files and, <laughs> and copying existing code. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Uh, okay, so um, let's see. So we need, we need to do this in order to deploy. And I really want to deploy today. And I'm not going to do this right now, because whatever, I don't care about that. But I actually I did get um, feedback from the creator of Bulma. So Bulma is like a CSS framework and he also does like other framework stuff. 
and he like I uh, I got I paid him to um, review remake JS and he gave me a bunch of feedback on it so that was really cool that was this morning that's why I'm not streaming until like 2 30 p.m. is because my my morning was filled with like an hour hour and a half of just like getting feedback on remake and feeling overwhelmed and <laughs> feeling like there's so much left to do um, okay so we need to make the publicly accessible URLs uh, we need to we should do this too. Uh, I kind of want to do this, but that's not top priority. I do want to do this too. You can just pay people to review your stuff. Yeah, it's pretty nice. You just like reach out to someone. You could even just like reach out to someone and ask if they'll do it for free. Like I, I have some friends that I'll, I, I'm going to do that with. Or that I have done that with. I did that with one friend. We sat down for like eight, an hour and a half. And I just showed him the framework. But if you don't know the person. And you really respect them. I think it's it's worth it just to reach out to them. And pay them you know, like a hundred bucks or whatever. For a few hours of their time. Usually they're into it. Because it's like a fun project. Um, but yeah usually they. Yeah usually they charge a decent amount. Because they're developers. <coughs> so they, you know, they want to make. They want to have valuable time, but uh, yeah, I actually lucked out. He actually starred my project on GitHub, and then I, like right after that, like two other people started it because I think they follow him. Um, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so none of these things need to be done. Oh, this thing needs to be done. Okay, so deploy app to digital ocean. I think deploying it is going to actually be difficult because there's like some secrets there. You know, they send like a secret password and they there's SSH keys or whatever. So I'm going to have to like turn off my screen for some of that. I don't know. I'll talk you guys through it. But okay, let's go through the the adventure story thing. So the the back button uh, doesn't always show up on sub choices. Well, it's choices and text. Okay, I don't know what this means. But let's see. So if I go in here... Okay, so we're gonna... Uh, let's see. Enter the cave. Uh, enter it silent, silently. Look around for a tool or weapon. Throw it for distraction. Okay, so the back button's showing up for all those. I think the issue is if I start fresh. So let's delete this choice and delete that choice and create a, a new choice. And we can just go into it. And then let's just create new choices here. And then let's go into one of these. Okay, so here, this is the problem. So the problem is when the, when the parent doesn't have any text or choices or something. I don't know. I don't know exactly the problem. But uh, that was weird too. Right? So I go I go in here, then I go then I don't fill out anything, but I make some choices. So there's no text. And the ID for this is let's see, B L K or whatever. I don't know if that's an L. I think that's an L. And I click here and now I can't go back. Now if I go back using the back button Okay, I do go to BLK. And if I go back there, I get to the beginning of the story. Okay, I don't know. I, it looked like there was a weird bug there, but maybe not. Um, that That's the worst kind of bug, honestly. It's like, yeah, there's probably a bug, but <laughs> whatever. But, like, let's, let's just deal with it in a year when, you know, someone else notices it and it's already ruined, like, hundreds of people's experiences. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the problem was. Here, here. I went back. No, that seems to be doing okay. Okay, so we just need to make it so uh, we, we check to see what, when we're going to show the back button. So we say if parent item and parent item dot text, then we're going to show the back button and we're also going to say the choice. Now, I don't think that's the best te uh, test. I think what we want instead is just to say if current item 
and current item dot now let's get our our JSON. So our JSON is going to be top level our top level story. So top level story. This is what we want. Top level story. So and then we'll re we'll reverse it. So we'll put the sorry we'll put this down here and we'll put this at the top. So basically if our current item oh wait <laughs> we set it to top level story. Uh, da, da, da. I have no idea now. Oof. Data dot top level story and data is going to come through either way. So top level story is always going to be there. Current item is we're setting to top level story. Um, I think what we can do. Yeah, we could use another variable, right? Because I mean, so the difference between this and all the all the lower level ones is is nothing. It has oh, it doesn't have choice text. Uh, I don't I don't want to enforce that as a thing. Okay, so let's just create another variable. So we're just gonna do curly braces. So we're gonna do set um, is top level story. And we're going to set that equal to, oh, but no, I do want current item too. Because I want there to be an ID at the beginning of the story as the default. It's not the default right now, but I do want it to be. Ah, uh, jeez. I really don't know how to tell if this is the top. Sorry, I, I guess I could... I, so one thing I could do is I could just have like um, a flag here. Hey Commander Root, how's it going today? So I could just say like this, which isn't bad actually. It's it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, it's not too it's not too bad. It's a little weird. Um, but we could have something like that. But I really don't want to do that. Uh, let's see. So, what is the parent item? So let's just get the p parent item. Could you could you do this in the front? If you go down a level, you set it to false. So you set is parent level story, yeah. But it seems too complicated. I think I let's let's see what this what this returns. So let's. I don't want to have like a flag on everything. I just want to be able to tell, um, like just very, just based on the shape of the data. I feel like it should be possible. So let's see. Um, oh, this is gonna error out. Unknown path. Unknown block tag. Oh, parent. Oh, yeah, of course. I want to render this. And I think it's three to just render it. I don't know. I don't think this is going to work. But let's see. <laughs> Template error. Okay, let's try one more time. Let's just do two. And let's put, I don't know, let's put it in like a pre block, I guess. I don't think this is going to render because it's not. Yeah, it's an object. Do I have access to JSON here? On a super random note, because NJK made me think of it, I swapped over to Django for my personal project. Development time increased tenfold for me. That's awesome. Oh man, we're getting some big bugs here. Oh, it's just template render error json stringify yeah okay that makes sense that we wouldn't have access to that um boop, boop, boop. let's see uh none none jacks j 
JSON stringify. Uh, it's what I work with. It's sad because I wanted to do JavaScript, but I think the project is too big for learning purchases. Half an hour late, but still here. Good luck with the bugs. Uh, thank you. What what bugs? What bugs have you heard about, Android? Um, yeah. Well, Salvin, you could always switch to uh, this new framework I've been hearing all about um, called Remake. It makes it super quick to build new uh, <laughs> new. Um, it's not and it's not experimental at all. Oh yeah, yeah, Android, you're right. You're right. I did just say big bugs. Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, how do I stringify it? Man, JSON to string. Uh, okay, here we go. Dump. Dump. Awesome. We're just going to dump it. Programmers are the absolute worst at coming up with names. Dump, really? Okay, so top level story. So parent item is going to have top level story on it. So instead, we're going to say if parent item and parent item top level story. Boom. Now, <laughs> now we're relying on this, what was a uh, experimental feature of parent item. <laughs> we're relying on it a lot. But mostly just to display the back button and whatever. So that's fine. Because, I mean, if we get rid of the experimental feature, we'll just have to get rid of the uh, this back button. Um, but that's all. Uh, okay, so now if we go in here, we still have a back button. Nice! So we fixed that bug. So fixed, fixed big, we'll say fixed big bug for, uh, for Android, right? Uh, fixed big bug uh, with back button. So can I get like a quick poll here? So you guys, a lot of you like show up for every stream or like a lot of streams. Did you did any of you leave last time because I was working on the story? I'm just like I'm just curious if it it's totally fine if you did, but like I was coding and then I started working on the story more, and then the the viewers fell off like by half. And I'm just curious, did people just get busy, or are people really not interested in the story? Okay, I'm just curious because like if like most of the audience just like wants to hear about programming and is really not interested in storytelling or other like creative things, I'm fine with that. And I'll just like try to keep the stream focused. But if people don't mind. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, because if people don't mind, like I'd prefer to do like story stuff too on the stream sometimes. Okay, so that's cool to hear. Uh, if anyone did have a problem, like not a problem with it, but like, you know, like if you were kind of bored by the story aspect, because I know it kind of went on for a while. We were doing, we were getting pretty in depth with that story thing. Um, I totally understand. Just let me know, because I just like to, um, same, I wasn't here, but I would have stayed. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <coughs> cool. I just, I, I just like to know, you know, what, what you guys are into and, yeah, just like calibrate based on that. Because I can always work on the story off stream, you know, work on other things when I'm on stream. Okay, so we fixed that bug. There's only a few more things we got to get through here. So turn off caching for routes. So this is a cool thing. I don't know if you guys know about this, but this is actually something you should know about as a web developer, which I didn't really know about. So if I go here, so I go into this like new view, and then uh, let's just go into like a new view. So we'll go here and I create a new choice and I edit this choice and I do blah, 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 blah. And then I edit this thing here, right? So this is like with any dynamic web application. You edit some stuff on the page. Now watch this. I'm gonna go in here, okay? So remember that this, this page is filled with a bunch of stuff, right? So I'm gonna go in here and then I'm gonna use the back button. I use the back button, everything's gone. What happened? 
none of my uh, AJ CFK, the new button, it's all gone. Now, if I refresh this page, it's all going to come back. And so it's the exact same page, it's right? So it should be here. Boom, it's right here. So it really is there, but um, because of caching, and it's this thing that like Chrome and I think Safari and maybe even Firefox implemented, where it's like this back button cache, and it's like a it's like a snapshot <coughs> of the app, and so it's not like a real cache, like a I don't know, I don't know what a real cache is, but it's just like a really simple snapshot, and even if it was a real cache, like um you know just I don't I don't know what a real I don't know what I'm saying real cache. <laughs> But like it's a different type of cache. It's like the, it's this like a special implementation thing they did. But even if it wasn't that, it still would cause problems because this page, um, by default, it doesn't have a cache header on it. Uh, so because it doesn't have a cache header on it, it doesn't. It just caches it, um, like the default by its by its modified date or something. I don't know. So that's why. It's causing an issue, but I see here we have no cache here, but I think that's not enough. So um, let's see. So I have this other project, Request Creative, where I already took care of this bug, which was like really freaking me out because I was like, what the heck's going on? But if we go in here and we search for cache, uh, nope, that's the cache plus string um, where is it oh this is my content security policy this is a pain in the ass to maintain but it's super good for locking down the security of your app um, it just makes it so that people can't execute JavaScript inline <coughs> or like from other sources so it makes your site a lot harder to hack. Uh, well, mostly on modern modern browsers. <coughs> okay, so let's go to routes. No, it's not in here. I think it's in the main or the app.js. Let's see where where do we define where do we pass things off to the routes? So where we set the locals. I hope there's nothing private in here. I don't think there is. Okay, routes. Oh weird. I thought it was in here somewhere. We turn off the caching. Ugh. Oh yeah, did someone say something in chat? I kind of like that you pit stop on other stuff. Sometimes dev only gets a little cross-eyed. Oh nice. That's good to hear. I really, yeah. I really appreciate that. Um, this is kind of fun, is bot. <laughs> I like to detect whether it's like Google bot or like a search engine bot and I just show them a different page. Um, I forget why I do that. Oh yeah, <laughs> so if you guys want to know something funny about this um, request creative app that I created, it generates a new user on every page visit. <laughs> so every time go someone goes to the site, you know, if they're not, if they're a new person, right? If it's someone they haven't seen before, it'll actually create a whole new, new user for them. <laughs> and that's just so I have somewhere to like store their data so that if they do want to create an app, you know, they can work with the demo app, create some data, and then transition it to a, like a real user account. But it's funny because I had to like show all the like Google, Google bot and Bing search engines like a different page so that they wouldn't be generating a new user. Um, where the heck is this thing? Start? No, it's not on start. Helpers? No. Um, ba -ba -ba. maybe it's in route somewhere. Oh, I bet it is, right? I bet it's... Here we go, no? General... <laughs> Gen maybe it's in general controller. What a name for something, huh? General controller. Okay. Man, it's not in here either. Hey, lit same Mario. How's it going? Um, 
what are you working on? What do you want to learn about? What are you here for? What are you working on? Tell us anything. Remake controller. Nope. General controller. It must be in main, right? It just must be. Unless it's here. No, it must be in main. Or app. App.js. Okay, so somewhere here I'm telling it to not cache things. This is fine. This is just for like public stuff. So this is for uploads in the public directory. That's not like where I'm rendering stuff. Um, this is a session stuff with the Mongo store. This is flash messages, which I don't think I really use. Uh, oh, maybe this is, nope. Load JSON file. So this is just a cache, cache busting string for like the JavaScript for the, um, yeah, for the front end JavaScript, but it's not for the page. Okay, is production secret key from product hunt. It's like one of my favorite websites, or at least it was. I think it still kind of is, <coughs> but their quality, quality of the apps there have gotten worse over time. I think partly because people are trying to game it and partly because people can only create so many apps, you know? Okay, so it's not there. I don't know where the heck it is. It's not, or wait, unless it's right here. No, because this is just the content security policy stuff. Uh, let's, I guess let's search the app for like max, max age. Maybe that is something. Max age. This is all in node modules. That's not useful. Maybe it wasn't max age. Maybe it was expires. Because there's like multiple ways of telling uh, <coughs> an app that things that something's expired. These are all in node modules. I could I should really filter out the node modules. Change generate. Where did I put it? Handlers. I mean, it has to be somewhere, right? I know it's somewhere. Okay, let's search for cache one more time. Cache, cache max age. This is whatever. That's just for the public directory. Cache plus string. That's all that. Okay, that's all that's on this page. So it's not on this page. I'm pretty sure. Let's go into routes index. Router, general controller, account controller, artist bundle. Thank you. I guess it's possible that I put it into the individual controllers. Oh, I did. Because you, I think you don't want it on some pages. I did. I put it <laughs> I like a, like a dumb person. I, I copied and pasted on every controller. Okay. Uh, nice. <laughs> um, okay. I'm not a dumb person, right? Uh, okay. I know. I'm not a dumb person. I just do dumb things sometimes. Okay, so let's go in here, main.js, and let's see. Wh where's a good place to put this? Um, sign up plugin. We don't really care about these. These are just like Ajax routes. Um, so let's go into the render routes. And here, this is, I think, where we need to put it. So um, let's see. If I go back into, man, where was it? <laughs> I just had it. Oh, I removed that project. I think I put it just before it was rendered, because I think that's when I when I set the header. So just before I do that, I'm going to set the header here, and I was going to say must revalidate. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So let's refresh here. Okay, so now let's go one more level deep. Let's create some a new choice, right? And we'll just say ggg, 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 and now we're going to go into this choice, and then we're going to use the back button. 
boom, 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 re revalidated. So this cache control header, no cache, no store, must revalidate. It tells it that the HTML we're sending it needs to be like reloaded every time from the server instead of uh, remind me when you stop coding or take a break because I got an unrelated question but don't want to interrupt. This is a good spot for it because I just finished fixing this bug. Um, so fix back button cache issue. Okay. Yeah, so ask away um, Android 4682. Okay, so that's done. Ooh, the next one's going to be, it might take us the rest of the day, it might take us 20 minutes, uh, but we'll see. Um, so before I get to that task, Android needs to ask their question, which I believe they are patiently typing away at right now. Um, hopefully. Uh, so would you, by coincidence, know why Node IMAP throws a error self-certificate on a, like, Gmail server? Huh. Um, is, is the error like this with the question mark? And did you Google it? Um, so, I mean, so that sounds like, I'm sure you know this, but like, uh, it sounds like an HTTPS thing, right? Um, I don't really know a lot about that stuff, but I would imagine if Google is letting you talk to their servers. Oh, really? Oh, that's weird. Is it with the question mark? Because that would imply that it's, it's, it, it's looking for a self-certificate and it's not finding it. I actually, I don't, I think I told you this um, before. Without. Okay, so then that could, that could be that it's an, an issue with the self-certificate. I really don't know. So are you using, so before, outside of um, Electron, are you using like a local host? Are you using local host to communicate with uh, Gmail through Node IMAP? And are you sure, are you absolutely positive you're using exactly the same setup? Because that's a, that's a big thing, right? I mean, if you're like talking to Gmail instead of, you know, some other email service, they might have different errors. So you want to make sure that you have exactly the same setup. And then it sounds like something to do with the HTTPS certificate. Okay. So maybe it's maybe it's going through um, something else, right? Maybe it's going through like a different pathway because of Electron. Yeah, it, it, is, it is pretty weird actually. Um, I don't. I just don't know how Electron works. I've never. I've never used it. I just thought it was a really good thing to use for your app. It sounds like the pretty, the best use case. Oh, Inkdrop. I follow this guy on Twitter. The guy that makes that. I think. Is this the same thing. Yeah. Um. Oh. So just a tip for GitHub issues, you don't actually have to read anything except for what has the thumbs up. <laughs> I'm a really lazy programmer. Huh. Yeah, as usual, Solvin has the answer, I think. Um, 
Huh. What's the uh, underlying issue? I'd be curious to know. Okay, so let's see. We have a few issues here with this app. Um, so let's see. Bum, 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 get up. Okay, so there's a few issues here. So one is that um, if you want to link to like your particular adventure story that you came up with, um, you can't right now. You can only access this URL if you're logged in. So what we need to do is uh, namespace the data so that it has like the username first and then it has like the name of the app and the name of and then like the ID. The other issue is that what if I go here without the ID? I guess right now it's just going to load up this page which is fine. Yeah I guess that part's not really an issue. I guess I was thinking what if you have multiple adventure stories but then if you have that then at the top level you're going to have a list of them and then when you click into it it's going to give you the one with the ID. So I think that's that, that part's actually fine. Okay so the only thing we need is this little username before it which is going to change the entire structure <laughs> of how all of the data is laid out. Uh, of uh, like the entire like framework basically. Um, so it's not like, uh, I don't think it's a bad change. I think it's a really good change to namespace the apps and the URLs by username. Um, I don't really have a problem with that. Yeah, that's always a good approach, just like switch to a, a simpler library. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just figure out all of the places that this is going to this is going to touch. So let's go to main JS and let's create a new to do file. So I'm going to say like to do and then namespace username. So Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this will say whether it's logged in or not. That's not going to really be touched. Uh, serialize user, deserialize user, same thing. But when the user signs up, there's a couple things I think we want to do. So we need to check. So on sign up, uh, check if username uh, contains only valid characters and that's going to be like A to Z, A to Z, uh, one, or 0 to 9, underscore, and dash. Is there anything else that should be able to be in a username? Let's look on Stack Overflow. You guys can feel free to chime in too. Uh, valid username. A period. Okay, I guess I'm okay with a period. Oh, they didn't escape the period. Don't you need to escape it? I think you need to escape it. Yeah, so no period, and then no dashes. I do like the just keeping it simple. <laughs> Android doesn't. <laughs> Android as usual, causing problems. Are used for usernames that are generated from me. I don't know. I guess I, I'm I'm kind of fine with just going with like anything that can be in a URL, and I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, include plus and dash too. Um, I think I need to escape a period. Uh, let's see, and I th I definitely have to uh, escape plus. Okay, so let's see valid URL characters uh, in like a path. Um, okay, dot, 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 do we have plus? We don't have plus. Sol uh, Solvin? Did Solvin say plus? Solvin is wrong. Sol <laughs> Solvin is completely wrong. Um, oh no, there is a plus. There's a plus right there. I'm wrong. I'm completely wrong. <laughs> uh, Okay, I'm wrong. Sorry, Salvin. I was trying to sh shame you. Because you, you, you've just been like so consistently helpful to all these different people. I'm actually getting kind of jealous, to be honest. <laughs> um. <coughs> uh, sorry about that. Okay, so, so plus is valid. So we got plus... Do we have a period? You know it's hilarious that I'm just like looking at Stack Overflow and just trusting this. Uh, why should I trust? Okay, unsafe characters. We're not using any of those. Okay, so all of these. Boom bada boom. Nice. What happened? I fixed it with this lib. Ooh. Ooh, that's awesome. Hey, what about me? I, I provide background noise to your coding. No, I'm just kidding. I don't deserve, I don't want to be in your contributors until I deserve to be in your tr contributors. So keep asking questions, and whenever I get to <laughs> Whenever I get to an answer before Solvin and my answer's right, then I can maybe I'll be in your contributors. <coughs> um, in Node 12, TLS doesn't send SNI by default. Oh, wow. I don't know what that means. Oh, server name? Server name something? Huh. Yeah, I understand. I'm going to make a sad notice so you feel bad. <laughs> okay. Um, so enough trolling for now. <laughs> uh, let's go to my favorite uh, <coughs> visual regex tester, debugx. And we're going to see uh, what if we can write a regex to just match this. Um, okay, so a to z, a to z. Oh, it's not it's not a character thing. Okay, so we want this one of a to z, a to z, zero to nine, underscore plus, period, or dash. Perfect. Also, at some point in the not-too-distant future, I might buy some of your time to work one-on-one -on, -one on setting your stuff up for your writing page. Are you talking to me? Okay, cool. And you know, I'd be totally willing to give you that time for free. As far as I'm concerned, until I start getting people like knocking down my door trying to get help on Remake uh, with like very advanced projects, I am fully available to help anyone on, on Remake-related projects. If you need help with like React or Vue.js, you'll have to pay me. But Remake is my baby, so I'll be willing to help with that for free. Um, as long as it's not like too much time. You know, like if we're talking about like I'm building the whole project from scratch, maybe I'll start to charge you then. But if it's like 
you just want an intro because my documentation that I have up there so far isn't good enough, <laughs> then I think I should probably be helping you and getting a better idea of what documentation should be there. Um, how much do I cost? I think it depends on the project. Uh, if I really, really like the project, I think I'm like uh, 40 to $50 an hour. Um, but I think for most projects, it's around like $100 an hour. Um, but since you're like a member of the stream, even if I didn't like your project, I'd probably give it to you for like $75 an hour. Yeah, probably. That's like the number one uh, advice on like all every freelance forum is like charge more. Um, okay, so on sign up page. Okay, so we're gonna check if the username, so once we have the valid username, the username that can be used in a URL, then um, uh, yeah, the main reason I I charge uh, like $75, 200 an hour is because I really just don't have the time. Like if I didn't have my own projects and I just needed to bring in extra money, I would definitely consider charging like $50 an hour or something like that. <coughs> um, but my time is so valuable to me, to me that I would actually pay someone like, I don't know, like a few hundred dollars if they could like free up, you know, like a few days of my time, you know, like that's how valuable my time is to me right now. So it's kind of the other the other way right now. Your company charges two twenty five an hour for your rates on your on a healthcare on your healthcare product. Wow. Yeah, that makes sense. He probably gets about about half that, I would think. Maybe a little less than half. I think that's usually how it goes, you know, because the company's covering so much. Yeah. Cause that's actually a really good... No, it's a really good deal. Like, the company's covering uh, taxes, insurance, benefits, office space... Uh, like any tools he needs, software, hardware, um, maybe food every once in a while. <clears throat> it's like it's super expensive to run a company. It's a lot of overhead. Um, I think that's pretty normal. I think if you make half, if you're like working for an agency or something and you make half what they're charging, oh yeah, that's the other thing. Like getting clients and doing marketing and outreach, that's huge. If your company like brings you clients for free, that's huge. That means you don't have to spend like 50% of your time reaching out to people. Yeah, that's like the most valuable thing. I can't believe I forgot that. I mean, health insurance and like, and dental insurance is already, you know, like 10 or 15% or whatever. And then taxes and office space and whatever. But just bringing you clients is, is huge. Huge. Okay, so we want to make sure we have the valid username. Then after that, um, what are we going to do? So I think we just render the page. So I guess the question is, if you go to this URL, will it still work? Because it'll, like, it, it'll know that you're logged in, right? So it'll have your username already. I think it won't work. I think it needs your username. I think that just to make the URLs consistent, and so you can just copy and paste the username and send it to someone else, and you'll know that the, it works for them too. I think it's too confusing if it works without the username for you, but then it doesn't work with, it doesn't work except if you have the username for someone else. So I'm gonna say you always need the username uh, here. So like username123, for example. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do this first. So, because this is just an easy thing to do. So when someone signs up, we're going to see if the username's taken. But before we do that, uh, we're going to see if it's a valid username. So if the password length is less than 8, or 
the username length is less than one, or, and then in here, I guess, uh, we'll do this, const valid username regex equals that. Um, <coughs> so we're going to say, or this dot test username now we're gonna say if uh, this one <coughs> and we're gonna show a flash error and we're gonna say uh, your username um, can only contain letters, numbers, how do I say this guys? Your username can only contain, I mean I can't be like underscore plus or period, right? Do I put, maybe I put them in quotes? Oh, contain. Your username can only contain letters, numbers, Maybe I say and underscores. And if they figure out that they can have a period in there or a plus sign, that's fine. And certain symbols, well, certain symbols, and then like, say like, for example, like underscore, uh, let's make this template string. So like this, would you do this? It's a little convoluted. But I guess it's nice, you know, it gives the people, it gives people some like options. But I think if I just say contain letters, numbers, and underscores, I think that's gonna cover 99% of cases. Like I think most people aren't gonna care that they can't have a period. Although I guess it would be nice if someone's taken your username and you just want to like add a period instead of an underscore like you normally do instead of like having to change it completely. That might be kind of nice. Um, okay, I'll leave it like this just so people know. Oh, and instead of EG, I'll say IE. <laughs> um, there we go. Okay, so let's try signing up with an invalid username. We do sign up, and we're gonna do blah 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 blah. What spaces? Nice. Okay, so now if we try like this ampersand that. Okay. The the purple. Or the or the red. Which one? or a color that you're working with. Oh, nice. This color, I think, comes from... Uh, I think the purple comes from the CSS framework that I'm working with, um, which is Spectre, Spectre CSS. It doesn't have as good of documentation as a uh, Bulma, but I really like this framework actually. It's pretty nice. Yeah, this, this color is definitely from here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we've got that working. So now we know we've got a valid username. So now the next thing to do is let's go to our home page. So let's go to shared and we'll go to home and instead of linking directly to this, uh, Envision with Justin. Awesome, I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. Um, let me know if there's anything <coughs> that you wanna like learn about um, or, or share anything that you're, you're building. Just let, let me know. Um, <coughs> okay, so here we need to add the username in here. So we need to be like, username. However, 
I'm not sure if we have access to the username on this page because this is in the shared app and I don't know which data we're passing in there. So let's let's look. Um, how would I find that out? Oh yeah, from rendered routes and we're going to get we get the we're going to get the apps info. Now there's something I'm doing here if it starts with an underscore. So let's search for underscore. So if it starts with an underscore um, I'm going to make sure that it has an underscore when it's being passed back. Okay. And then what do I do if it has an underscore? If it starts with an underscore, um, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it the, I'm going to make it have app name and I'm going to pre-process the data. So it's going to add IDs to everything and give it the current item and the parent item. And I'm going to, had an app name. So we don't need we don't really care about any of that. Uh, data in that case is going to be undefined, but we're going to get the params, the query params, the path name. These are going to both be undefined, and we're also going to get the user. So we should have the user. So we'll say user.username. Um, I don't know why sometimes I feel it like it's necessary to uh, to check first, like why wouldn't I just do this and then, and then have it fail, right? I feel like that's a, a better way to do things. I think I'm a little bit too afraid of failing. Oh wait, what happened there? Your username can only contain letter, but I only did have. Oh no, we're bugging out. Okay, wait, I know what happened. Um, do 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 valid. So let's get this. I think it's because no, I don't know. I don't know why why it's bugging out. So let's do this valid, and then we're gonna do test. Um. Okay. So that passed. Oh. Oh. What? And, okay, so it's invalid if the username has zero characters. It's invalid if it doesn't pass this test. Okay, so, yeah, because this is the valid, okay, there we go. So now I'm, Equally as weirded out by like why why it was working before. Uh, okay, let's try it again with spaces. Sign up. It, it works. It, it goes through with spaces. Am I stripping the spaces or something? Ish. Sign up. No, it should just be. Melody. What the heck? So A to Z, A to Z, zero to nine, underscore, plus, period, dash. There's no spaces there. And then plus. Um, oh. Okay, I think I know. So yeah, that's going to be true because... We're not matching the whole thing, right? So we need to be doing, is it that? I think it's that and then that, uh, that. Oops. Okay. Bar. Okay. So let's go back to debug X. So, so the issue is that our regex, um, It'll, it'll pass if it just matches part of it because we're not specifying that it needs to be from the beginning and to the end of the string. I'm pretty sure that's the issue. So let's copy this. Let's do that. Let's do that and dollar sign just to confirm. So the, uh, it doesn't tell me what it means. That's unfortunate. 
Copyright 2013. Man, I think I talked to this guy back in 2013, and I like wanted to pay for this service. And I think he was just getting off the ground then. He wanted it to like be a big thing. But I don't know anyone who's willing to pay $5 a month for a regex debugger. Even though this is my favorite, you know, I would pay like maybe $20 a year. Maybe. But $5 a month, that's pretty expensive. Um, okay. So yeah, this is how you do accept. But beginning of the string is like this, and end of the string is like that. Okay, so now we've got beginning of the string, uh, end of the string. So now this will match the entire string. Now our, Now it should work. So let's log out, sign up, do spaces, sign up. You like regex 101? Let's see. Regex 101. Insert your regular expression here. Okay, let's try it. Um, and then insert your test string here. No match. Explanation. I like the visual thing better though than this expl explanation thing. <coughs> Sorry about that. My, uh, yeah, I could see how this is pretty useful because it explains it in detail and and in order which is nice but I like the visual the visual one just makes more sense to me is there like a way to visually see it here it doesn't look like it um, okay so cool so we got the error now if we do <laughs> if we do the dollar sign one should get the error again boom okay cool but it, it does look pretty cool there are a lot of really cool regex debuggers online like uh, like infinitely many because it's the thing that like confuses developers the most and it's usually after you have the basics down you know like you know how to build a web app so it's like the first web service that they can offer other developers is like hey test out your reg your reg axis um, I don't like the way this looks but I guess that's okay I wish there was just a way to make it uh, stand out more. It looks like so many quotes right here. That's okay. Whatever. Okay, so let's see. What are we going to do? What are we doing? We're doing user.username. Okay. So let's um, we'll name our user Fred Fred. We'll sign up. And now if we go to the Adventure Story app, it's not going to load. Because right now we're going to the username. Um, same thing for this. So, but that's fine. Because that's so we just changed the link, but we didn't get it rendering yet. So, uh, let's get it rendering at that area. So, for this one, um, how are we getting the? route. So get apps info. We're making the route be slash or slash and then the name of the file slash id question mark. So what we need to do is no matter what the route comes back as, no matter what the route comes back as, uh, we need to say let route with username equal um, do I have the user? Yeah, I have the user here and it's request.user. Oh, really? Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Okay, so here's an issue. Oh, this is horrible. This is, <laughs> this is really bad. So this is where we get to the point where you know, I was like, oh, we're changing the entire architecture and that's going to be hard. So we don't have the user, right, until we're inside of the request. 
Ug, 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 ug. Yeah, we don't have the user until we're inside of the request. So we can't like prepend the route with the username. Oh, is that how we do it? So we're just gonna prepend. So to every route, we're gonna. Okay. So this is an idea. So let's just, just temporarily just humor me. We're gonna do route. We're gonna do like real real route okay and real route's gonna be so we got the regular route but we're just gonna prepend um, uh, um, slash um, plus oh no 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 plus so slash and then colon so it's gonna be a parameter and we're gonna say username and then slash uh, end quote and then plus route. So this is going to give, so every time we go to a page we're going to be looking for the username to prepend the, the route. And then here what we can do um, if we look at the params, so we have params ID for example right here what we can say instead is we can say, we can do so we got username here. Um, let's do like username param, and we're gonna do params dot username, and then we're gonna see if it matches. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so. The issue with this is that that means we need to prepend everything with this. So that means that even even the route even the home route can't just go here. It has to go to like slash you know username slash username one two three, um, which is not a huge issue. I guess it's fine, right? It kind of makes sense. I guess there might be a case where you would want to make this page public too. Yeah, totally. So I think it, it makes sense to have to have it it <coughs> default to this. Um, and let's see. So I actually made a mistake here. I put a I put a I post pended or whatever. I added a slash to the end too, but we're already going to have a slash at the beginning of the route. So we only need this part. Okay, so let's do that. And then we're going to say username uh, and we're going to say username from param uh, or from params. That's fine. And now we're just going to render the route with the current user's data. Right? So we get user and we get the data Okay, now here's the issue, is that we might not be logged in as the user, so we might never get this. So, um, so we need to get the user from like the database uh, if, if they're not logged in. So what we want to do is replace user with like logged in user. That's fine. I'm okay with that. And then let's uh, search for user and replace that uh, with logged in. Oops. With logged in user. Um, okay. So we'll do that. So that'll be so that'll just work exactly how we already have it. Now I don't think we actually want to change these a lot of the time, but um, okay. So we have the username from the parameters. We have the logged in user, and we're gonna. Say, so now we need to be able to get the data. So are we gonna need? Are we gonna get? 
the data the same way no matter what? Yes. And are we going to pre-process the data if the user's not logged in? Yeah, I don't know why not. I mean, we're just adding IDs there. I think it's fine to do that, even if the user's not logged in. And we, do, we definitely need these, so that's the same. Okay, so we actually didn't need to differentiate too much between the logged in user and the regular user. All we have to say is, if we don't have a logged in user, then we're going to get the user. So we'll say let user appear. Um, so if there is a logged in user, we're just going to set it set user equal to logged in user. If there uh, is no logged in user, then we need to get it. So this is not a hard thing to do, but something I str struggle with every time. Um, how do we get the user? So we're just going to do this, users collection, and then we're, I think we're just going to do a find one on this. So do find one, and we're going to do username is equal to username from params. Okay, and then we're going to say user is equal to that. Okay, and now actually we need to replace this all again with user. Okay, so that's fine. So basically, all we're doing is we're getting the username from the parameter, the parameters, and then we're saying, hey, if the user's not logged in, we don't have a way to get their user data. So we're gonna get the, we're gonna get it using the, um, the user's collection by searching the user's collection for a username that matches the username from the parameter, and then uh, we're gonna set user equal to that, and then we're gonna use that. Uh, to get the app data, to pre-process the request, to get the current item, to get the parent item, and oops. So here I don't want to return the user and all their data to the template unless it's the logged in user. So this is the one case where we're just going to set it to the logged in user because I don't want to give, I want to only give my templates user data. Yeah, I only want to give them user data if the user's logged in, right? So like, I don't want to, I don't want my templates rendering like the user's email or, or, you know, like private information. I don't even want to give my chance, myself the chance to make that mistake. So I'm only going to pass in the user data, like the overall user data if they're logged in. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, so now this should maybe work, right? Because we should be able to get the data even if we're logged out. Um, and we should, I think we should be rendering the route like this, right? So let me, let me do an example. So it's gonna be like um, username, or we'll just say like John slash, uh, uh, ta we'll say task fellow, right? Task fellow slash like one, two, three, right? Or I don't know, a better example would be adventure story because that actually has IDs. And so we're matching this with username and we're matching this with ID. Um, and we're doing this with like the page page name. Uh, so we'll just say page name route, right? Okay, so uh, we'll just say route is triple equals to this. Okay, so I think this should work. Let's try it. So if we go here and we go to Fred Fred, it didn't work. Maybe I just need to restart the app. 
Maybe I made a horrible mistake. Uh, no. Okay. So I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna go for a second. Uh, I'll be right back. I just have to um, stop off somewhere, uh, and I'll be right back. I am back. Okay, so let's figure this out. So what is going on? I went to my username. Uh, how long am I streaming for? Probably not much longer. See, so yeah, I started at 2.30. Um, <laughs> hey, hey Android. Um, I started at 2.30. I was planning on going for like two to three hours today. I think I'll probably do max like another 50 minutes but probably just like another half an hour. Um, whew, this is weird. I didn't think I had a content security policy on this app. Where am I? Remake apps? Do I really? I didn't think I had one. Okay, so uh, why do you ask, Salvin? Are you going to be streaming soon? Ooh, Ice Cream Codes, thank you for the 100 bits. That's awesome. Okay, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow sounds good. Yeah, that's perfect. That is perfect. Um, that sounds good. I actually, I might, I might have a, uh, a little dog tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, not mine. A friend of mine is bringing by a really, really cute dog that likes to sleep in, in laps and sleep in beds. And uh, so it's just like a tiny little fluff ball. So that should, yeah, that should be fun. Um, okay, so this is not loading. What is what is happening here? Yeah, puppy stream. Um, so I'm going to console log and I'm going to just console log the route. Uh, okay, so we have slash and then slash login slash ID slash sign up. Okay, so we didn't actually do our thing here. Oh, we, have, we, we don't use our real route thing. So I was like talking about... Uh, I was talking about this, and then I never ended up using it. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Temp route. 
and then route. Okay, cool. So now it should work. Boom, bada, boom. Okay, so now we have a small problem. So if we sign up, or if we log out, wait, what? <laughs> what happened? So logout doesn't do anything. Oh, uh, wait, huh? Why wouldn't logout do something? Logout's an API route, right? Or no, it's not. It's in uh, just in main. Log out. Awesome. Uh, see you later, Ice Cream Codes. I hope you have a great day. Um, maybe see you on tomorrow. I'll be on probably around uh, 11 or noon. Probably noon tomorrow. Uh, hey, Tamessa1. Uh, I am working on a full stack framework um, called Remake.js, uh, which makes building web applications super, super simple. Um, but right now I'm working <coughs> on, um, on fixing a few things. Um, the thing I'm trying to fix right now is, um, like right now you go to the base uh, route of the web application. Um, yep, I'm coding all in JavaScript. Back end is JavaScript and front end is, is JavaScript. So the thing I'm trying to fix right now is at the base route, it's going to load, you know, your web app or whatever, but there's no way to share this. So if you wanted to share your page with someone else, you couldn't share it. So I'm trying to implement it so that you have like usernames, uh, like a username as your base route. And then you could like copy this, you know, say it was like example.org slash username. Then you could just copy this and share it with someone else. Whereas right now it's just loading the web app at this route, which means if you shared this, they wouldn't see, you know, your information. Uh, so that's what I'm working on right now. But uh, for some reason, the logout route isn't working. Uh, can, can we know a little bit about you, uh, Tomessa? Are you, um, I don't know if it's Tim, Tim Mesa or Timessa, but are you um, working on something? Uh, are, do you have a project going? So you say you're a beginner. Are you learning about JavaScript, Python, Ruby? Or, uh, what kind of project are you working on? Um, what are you looking to learn about? Okay, so it looks like our, oh, I know why. I know why our login and logout routes aren't working. It's because we changed this route to have a, a catch-all as its first parameter. So, let's see. So now we have these. Yep, so, it's, so this is catching all of the base routes. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see, what does Tomasa say? Uh, JavaScript, Python, R, you like data science. Well, it sounds like you're learning a lot of different things at once. Are you, um, so you're not really building web applications, are you? Are you you're mostly just doing like data processing? I think, um, I'm not sure, but I think a few people here know about that. Uh, I think Salvin might know a little bit about that. And then a few other people, I think um, he hasn't, he's not here right now, but I think Flip Coder, Flip uh, Coder knows about that too. Okay, cool. Um, what kind of things in, um, in data science are you interested in? Are you like learning for a job that you already have? Or are you looking for a, are you looking to get into data science or? What's your focus? Okay, so I have this catch-all route. So what I could do is just define, I could just define these routes earlier, I think. Um, I think this would work if I just, if I just brought these up earlier. You're looking for a junior job somewhere. Okay, that's awesome. Um, if there's anything we can do to help, uh, let me know. Um, 
because we have a lot of supportive people on this channel and I think you know if we could help point you to resources or um, you know like uh, yeah totally um, or like if you have questions you know sometimes we just ask random questions in the chat and then you know we all google or or try to look it up and figure it out um, okay so Fred 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 okay so now I just totally broke it um Reference error, get collection is not defined. Okay, we're making progress. We got to a new error. So init rendered re rendered routes, and we, it's saying get collection is not defined, which totally makes sense. Because it is, it's not defined. So we're going to put it uh, here. We'll save and refresh. Okay, uh, cool. Cool, cool. So now let's uh, sign up. Okay, sign up. <laughs> sign up isn't working either. Why isn't sign up working? I feel like that's another. Uh, uh, yep, 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 yep. Okay. So sign up is. It's being namespaced by the user. Uh, so what it's expecting to see. I don't know what it's expecting to see, and I don't know why it's rendering this page instead. Because um, it is rendering... Oh, okay, so it's interpreting this as the username. So if I do anything slash sign up, it's going to render the sign up page. This is a weird thing. Um, Android, you got to go. You're going to watch... Uh, you can't watch this in stream uh, and pay attention to the Netflix. <laughs> okay, have a good uh, good night, Android. Um, if you yeah, if you want, stop by tomorrow. Okay, so I need this to be at the top level, a top level route. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so anything preceded by an underscore is kind of, is like a top level route. It's not it doesn't have any user or user data associated with it. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to do. So right now things pre uh, folders that are prepended with an underscore it means that they don't have their own app data. And now I'm adding on that they don't have, they're not associated with a user. Um, they're just kind of like a static route. I think that's kind of okay. <laughs> it's a little weird. Um, the other way I could do this is Um, no, I think that's the right way to do it. Okay, so we're going to get the apps info. To Toxena says, hey, do you know how I can inherit a prototype to another prototype in JS? Um, are you using classes or are you using the old school prototypes? It's not your homework. I don't care if it's your homework. I mean, this is better than Googling it, I guess, right? Um, so yeah, so is, are you using old school prototypes? So I know with classes you can just use extends. With I'm not actually... I've only used like flat prototypes. I'm pretty sure it's a little bit harder <laughs> to do. Um, I would just Google it. Uh, sorry, sorry, dude. Um, JS inherit prototype.
Do, do, do. Let's see. Inheriting methods. So it looks like you want to do this. So it looks like if you create, or wait, no. Do something prototype. So then you have this. Then you have this. So it looks like if you're working with modern JavaScript, uh, like ECMAScript 5 or after, you can do object create, and you can call that on an object that you want to inherit the prototypes for. But I don't know, it sounds like you want like multiple levels of prototypes. You don't want to replace it. New foo. I would look at this table. I would look at this table right here. This seems like what you're interested in. And it gives you all different kinds of answers. I'm not going to read through it right now, even though I should probably know this stuff. But it sounds like it, to me, it looks like it's going to give you all the answers you want. It's just like the pros and cons of doing it different ways. Um, and how much support you get. So this is supported by IE9 and up. This is supported by all the way back to IE5. And you, I would just play around with it and see if it does what you want it to do. But the easiest way would be to use classes, if you can, if you can get away with that. Because um, they make it a lot easier. Okay, so let's see. We have the app name. And we're going to say if app name starts with underscore then we're going to use the temp route okay so if app name starts with underscore then we're going to set the route to just uh, just the temp route okay and we'll say, we'll say um, top or like simple route I guess yeah we'll just call it simple route and then we're gonna set it to we're gonna just set the route to the simple route and then otherwise we're gonna set we're going to prepend it with the username. So here we should say something about this. So um, prepending an app uh, an app folder with an underscore. For example, underscore shared. Uh, let me know if that helped, by the way, with the prototype stuff. Uh, uh, talk send us. Let me know. Okay, so prepending an app folder with an underscore. Um, uh, what prepending 
does. So one, it will um, not require the username in the path, and two, uh, in the templates, in the URL path, to render the template. Um, it won't require the username in the URL path to render the template, and two, uh, no app data will be associated with uh, templates um, in in this folder. Okay. Uh, Now app data will be sent to templates in this folder. Uh, data, okay, so um, it won't receive uh, any apps data. only the user if they're logged in. Okay, cool. <coughs> so I think that's clear, clear enough for now. <coughs> so we have a different route based on if the app name starts with an underscore or not. So um, if it starts with an underscore, we're just gonna use a simple route without, the, without pretending the, the username. Otherwise, we're going to use the username route. Now, we have somewhat of a problem here because I believe it could, I believe it could um, read apps that aren't prepended with an underscore first. I'm not sure if that's really what would happen. But let's see. So let's um, let's just console log the app name here. Okay, and let's see what happens. Oh, temp root route is undefined. That's my bad. Okay. Okay. So we've got underscore sh shared. So it does read it in order. I'm not sure if that's how it's always going to do it. I guess it's okay to maybe assume that it will. Yeah, I guess I'm, that's what I'm going to assume right now. It would be unfortunate if it changed later, but we'll just assume that they're read in alphabetical order because it, it looks like that's what's happening. Okay, so the next thing to worry about is we have a console log over uh, somewhere. So I think it's here. Okay, here. So these are where all of our routes are. So we have slash, we have slash login ID, slash signup ID, and then username, and then username for task fellow and for adventure story. Okay. So that looks like it should work. So now if we go to slash signup, we're gonna get this. Okay, so now let's go to the next problem. So if we do uh, pbrain as our username, and we go in here, we are going to render, what are we rendering here? What's happening that, there? So we're rendering slash, which is the home, Okay. <sighs> okay, so unfortunately, this is unfortunate because we don't want to, um, 
I don't think we want to render this. Um, so we have this home template, right? And it's inside of the shared. Um, so it's it's acting like it's a. It, it's not a username route, right? So it doesn't need to be prepended by the username because it's in this underscore app folder, right? Um, and so, so it's just going to respond to the regular slash. However, I think by default we don't want that. I think we want home to be uh, to be like slash username. I don't think we want it to be the regular slash. I don't know what would go at the at the regular slash. I like just the route, the, the root uh, URL. I guess that would be like the home page of the app, whatever it is, right? So like the, the landing page of this entire web application would be at just the slash. But I think if you go to the regular slash, you go to that page, you go to the landing page, but if you go, but in order, like once you log in, you have to go to like slash username in order to view your stuff. Um, yeah, in order to like view your pages or your apps. I think that's fine, right? I think I like that. So I think that means that we want to create, so there's a few options here. One is that we, we like, I guess we can redo this, right? So we can say, yeah, I think we, we redo this. I like that idea. So I think underscore just means that it doesn't have app data associated with it. So let's, let's, um, let's say that. So uh, app folders that start with an underscore um, <coughs> don't have app data associated with them. Okay, but I think what I want to do is I want to make um, I think I want to make some kind of special syntax for rendering regular pages that don't have that aren't uh, prepended by the username. So I think if a page name is prepended by an underscore, uh, then it's not a username route. So like login and sign up, right? So I think let's let's prepend these with underscores and try this. Uh, okay, Sullivan. Uh, have a have a great night. Uh, see you tomorrow. Uh, thanks thanks a lot for stopping by. Um, uh, thank you for answering all the questions in chat too, by the way. That's really nice of you. Okay, so... So we're not going to have this simple route thing based on the app name. We're going to have it based on the... Uh, we're going to have it based on the page. So let's see, existing, okay, so this is, this, I don't care about this. What is this? This is the name of the page, right? I'm pretty sure this is the name of the page. And then what else were we looking for? A route, template string, and app name. Okay, so I think this is the name of the page. Let's, um, let's just console log that here. Uh, okay, so we've got underscore login, underscore sign up, home, adventure story, and task fellow. Okay, so the first thing we're going to say is, um, like, is, uh, should render at base route. 
Okay, and then we're going to say if the name starts with an underscore, then we're going to render uh, at the base route. Um, and then we need to strip that underscore. So we need to set name equal to uh, name dot replace um, and we're going to replace I think we could do trim too but let's see I think this will be easier so let's do debug x I just don't know if trim is supported like trim left is supported in this version of node so instead let's do underscore plus okay and we want the um, the start I think this is the start of the string okay so let's test this out so we're gonna do a bunch of underscores and then replace Sla uh, slash and then empty string. Boom. Got it. Okay, so that's the syntax we want, I believe. And we're going to just replace this with an empty string. So now our name doesn't have any um, so now the name doesn't have any underscores, but we do know whether it should be rendered at the ba base uh, route. So we're going to put that here should render at base route, boom, boom, got that. Okay. Um, uh, we'll just say renders at base route. Okay. And we're also going to pass that uh, into pages. Because um, we need to sort these afterwards, unfortunately. Okay, so uh, I think JS, I think sort is not an inline thing. Oh, in place. Huh, it does sort them in place. Let's see this. Once. Okay, it does sort them in place. Awesome. Okay, that's good. Okay, so, um, so, da -da -da -da. okay, what, what am I doing? So, renders at base route. So that, that works for that. We're replacing the, the name, we're replacing the underscores in the name. Um, I think that's the only other thing we need to do is just uh, let's just sort them. So I think pages sort and then we're going to say function and then a and B and then we just want to sort the ones that render at the base route first so we're gonna say um, oof. okay I really need to look this up so I think we return a positive number if A is greater than B and we return a negative number if B is less than A. Uh, let's look at site point, see what they say. Basic array sorting. Nope, I don't want the basics. Man, this is just sloppy. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to Mozilla. Okay, so we're gonna pass in a function Specifies a function that defines the sort order. If emitted the array of 
Elements are converted into strings and sorted according to each character's Unicode point value. Compare function. Okay, so if the result is less than zero, sort A to an index lower than B. If it returns zero, leave A and B unchanged. If it's greater than zero, sort B to an index lower than A. Okay, so for every so we want to say a and b, and we're going to say if a renders at base route and b does not render at base at the base route, then we're going to return minus one. Because that'll say, hey, put A first. Um, else, we can return 1, I believe. So let's console log this. Pages. See what happens. Oh, man. <laughs> That's annoying. Uh, so let's do pages.map. Um, and just have the uh, route. Okay, so five, I don't know why, it, why it's twice. Oh, it's because I'm sorting it after every time, so I don't need to do that. So I'm pushing it in here, and then, so for each, when does this for each end? Uh, right, I think it's here. So here is where I'm going to sort and console log. Okay. Okay, so we've got the login and the sign up first, and then the username and everything else. And... Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's exactly what we want. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's working, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's working. Um, I don't really have a good way to test. I guess I do, actually. I can create a new folder. Or... Yeah, let's create a new folder inside of apps. Or actually, no, let's, let's just create a new file in, inside of uh, like Taskfellow, right? So just create a new file in here, and we'll call it like underscore asd.njk, and let's see what happens. Oh, I got rid of the console log, didn't I? Okay. Boom, so asd gets bumped to the top, but bumped above the rest even though it's defined after this one. Okay, so the sorting is working. Who we think? We're pretty sure. We're pretty sure it's working. Okay, this is a lot of work. This is like pretty deep work. Um, okay, so now we've got these routes working. So now if I go to the home page, it shouldn't work. That's perfect. That's just what we wanted. Um, Okay, so what we want to do is after someone logs in uh, or signs up, we want to redirect them to their username. Okay, so let's go to, let's actually commit this code first. We just made so much progress. Um, so let's say like switching to username, to routes with Usernames with username na names or namespace by username. Switching to routes namespaced by username. Okay. We log in, sign up, home, log in, sign up, get apps, info. We didn't leave any console logs here. That looks good. Init rendered routes. That looks good. And main. Boom. Okay, nice. 
So we'll commit that. Okay, so now after you sign up or log in, so let's see. This is sign this is posting to sign up. What about login? This is posting to log in. Okay, so <coughs> um, let's see. I believe I should have okay, I do have the user here. So let's just do plus user plus username. And then here, is it request or response that has the user on it? And how do I not know this yet? It's the request, of course. That makes sense, right? If you look it up every time, you really just don't learn. Um, okay, so request.user.username. And that should be successful, yeah. Okay, so let's save that. Let's go. Uh, let's go to slash log out. So we log out. Oh, it can't get the regular slash. So after I log out, okay, redirect. It's going to redirect here. I think I'll, I guess I'll redirect to. Yeah, I just redirect to like login for now. That's fine. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now let's sign up. We'll say JJJJJJJJ for the user. Oops, <laughs> it's not a user. So we'll go to sign up. Boom, and we're redirected to their homepage. If we go to their app, we have their app. We're running into a small issue here where at the top level of the adventure story, we're showing the back button. That's weird. I'll have to fix that, but okay. At the top level, we're showing the back and the your choice thing. So let's see what's up with that. So if we go into adventure story, we're only showing the back button and the choice if there's no top level story on the parent item. Okay, so we I guess we messed something up about the current item and the parent item. So uh, let's see. Let's console like this. Four 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 current item, parent item. Let's refresh, I guess. Undefined, undefined. Okay, so there's something wrong with the pre-processed data. I should go soon. I, I said I was going to go like a million years ago, or at least like 20 minutes ago. Um, I really just want to get this working though. So for each data, I guess let's look at data, user, params, and app name. Just see what they are. Refresh. What? Oh, okay. Okay, so at least we're getting... Okay, so the first thing we're getting is the data. So that's... Uh, okay. This is too, too much. So we're going to do one, two, three, four. Hey, slow, cool. How's it going? We'll do a user here, params here, and app name here. And then we're going to refresh. OK, so now we should be able to tell what these are. OK, so data is just this because why why is that <sighs> so it's just the top level story with the ID and the choices oh okay yeah we're, we're not stringifying it so it does it does go into the nested choices okay so it's just um, objects. Okay, and then two is the user. 
So we got the username, the hash, and then the app data. And this is all stringified, which is why there's so much, which is why it looks like there's so much. And then three is the params. So we have username and ID of undefined, and four is just adventure story. Okay, so now I think we kind of understand what we've got. Let's go into pre-processing the pre-processing the data. So we're gonna go. We're gonna loop through the data. We're gonna say if it's a plain object, and it doesn't have an ID, generate a unique unique ID for it, for it. Um, if we added some unique IDs, update the user's collection. Also, get the ID for the root parameter if there is one. So. Yeah, we're not going to get the current item or the parent because we didn't pass in an ID here. So that makes sense, right? So that's why we don't have the parent item or the, or the current item. So if we go into um, here, we don't have parent item or parent item dot top level story. Oh, so this is something that broke earlier, I think. Because we shouldn't we shouldn't have okay, so let's let's do pre here and let's do this thing we learned earlier, which was uh, current item and then uh, dump. So we're gonna dump that and we're also going to dump just the data and we'll just prepend that with one and that with two. Let's refresh here. Okay, so one is nothing, but data is top level story. Okay, but data is going to be on every page, so we can't really tell um, Okay, so we can't really tell that. So we're gonna say, I think, we're only gonna get the current, no, we're not, we're gonna get the current item whenever there's an ID. And we want the ability to have an ID at this top level of the story. But, Okay, so basically we want to say if there's no current item Yeah, I guess if there's no current item when we, fir like right up here, right? Then we don't have then we're not, we're, we're not passing an, I an ID which w means we're at the top level, right? So let's just ass assume that Oh, yeah, yeah, I just want to get this done. Okay, so we're going to say is top level story. And then we're going to say, uh, we're going to negate, we're going to, I guess we say not current item. I don't even know how to do this in nunchucks. Um, negate nunchucks. Uh, not Wait, what was the last one okay yeah I think we have to use not that's kind of annoying I wish they would just like take on more JavaScript you know stuff like just like make it natural but whatever that's fine so we're gonna say if is top level story Okay, boom. So now we can go here. Oh, but there's another case. So it's also a top level story if there is a current item. So we're gonna say, <laughs> or current item dot, or, or parent item top level story. 
So these are the both of the cases, if it's a top-level story. Okay, geez, that's so, so complicated. Um, okay, and now we, we're having an issue with that. But that's only because we need to prepend everything with the username now. Uh, which is kind of annoying for, I guess, people writing these applications, right? But we'll just say user dot username. Okay. Now it should work. What happened? Oh wait. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So this th that'll work there, but that's not uh, where we need it. We need it in the partial um, for not for the story. That's fine. It's for this uh, anchor tag. So we're going to do it there. Yeah, that's a little annoying that you have to do that. But whatever. Okay, boom. Nice. So now it's working, I think. And if we go back... Oh, okay. Yep, that's again not going to work. So we need to go into the head. And... Uh, instead of going to slash... Right there, we're going to go to um, I don't know where to go. I guess uh, I guess it could just be username, right? User dot username. But if they're not logged in, so yeah, so we have to have two. So we're gonna say if user, then it's gonna be slash user dot username. This framework's getting a little bit more complicated than I want it to be. Then we'll say else and. I'll do this, uh, and if, okay, and, um, I, I think there should be a home page, right? <laughs> there really should be a home page. Um, yeah. So we'll just make it go to the home page. And then in here, we're going to have underscore home and JK. And let's just copy this. Um, and um, we can just use this like second example template down here. All right, I'm probably losing people's interest like big time. I just want to get this stuff done. Uh, we'll just say welcome, and we'll delete this, and we'll just say like sign up and log in. Uh, and we can say like, <laughs> we can have like an or here, I guess. So I'll span, or span. Okay, so now if we refresh, sign up or log in. I guess if there's a user, we, <laughs> we wanted to say something different, but whatever, that's what I'm doing for now. Yeah. Because there's no real way to get to that home page when you're logged in already. Okay, that was complicated, but I think it's um, it's good because now we can uh, have publicly displayed 
pages, right? So if you have this adventure story app and you go in here and you go back, now you might be able to share this with other people. I'm not sure if it's gonna work right now. No, it won't because, let's see why. Cannot read property adventure story of undefined on 3739 of init rendered routes. So wait, let me just commit this first. So switching to username routes and let's just uh, make sure I'm not leaving any console logs or anything weird. Nope, oh, that's fine. Okay, so on which line? 37. Okay. I gotta go guys, I will be on tomorrow at noon, uh, I'll see you then, I hope that you guys have a really good night, uh, see you tomorrow.